Well, it has been six years since a Jacksonville woman's body was found near the Washita National Forest. The family speaking out for the first time, looking for answers and justice. Fox 16's Rochelle Turner sat down with the family. She joins us live with more on what the family is saying about their loved one's case. Rochelle. Well, Kevin Donna, Latasha Pierce feels like her sister's case was swept under the rug. Pierce says her sister Jackie Hibbs was a mother, daughter, and friend to many. Pierce says they're going to keep fighting until they have answers. She was the sweetest person. She would give you the shirt off her back. Latasha Pierce says her sister Jackie Hibbs went out to Lake Sylvia near the Washita National Forest with a friend on July 14, 2012. The next day, she got a call from Jackie's friend. She told me, your sister's gone missing. I was like, what do you mean missing? And she was like, she was behind us in the water, and we turned around and she was gone. I was like, my sister couldn't swim. She wouldn't be in the water. Saline County detectives and officers from Game and Fish began searching for Hibbs. On July 19, 2012, Pierce says a passerby spotted her body. And when they found her, I mean, she wasn't much of nothing left of her. When the investigation started, Pierce says there were no leads or suspects. People were brought in. They changed their story three different times. Now, six years later, she fears detectives have forgotten about the case. It has been swept under the rug. I've called numerous times up there to find out, you know, who, what's going on. Have they heard anything? And to the people responsible. You know who you are. It's a very sad thing. She had a little girl. As the family continues to fight for justice, Pierce wishes she could see her sister one more time. I love her, and I should have told her that day. And I didn't, because I didn't think it would be the last time I saw her. AC Hathaway found on Toller and Aurora roads in the town of Ernal, north of Newburn. It's not far from his great grandmother's home. He disappeared from there two days ago. I just want to thank everybody for the job they've done. And I, I do want to recognize the chief here. Uh, this gentleman here is the one that put his hands on the little fellow when he heard him. I'm going to ask him just to say a few words about, about what, he, what he saw. Hold, hold on a second. Here, here's one. Hold on. And then this is the mother and the father. We just want to tell everybody that we're very thankful that you took the time out to come search for Casey and prayed for him. And he's good. He's, he is good. He's up and talking. He's already asked to watch Netflix, so he's good. He is good. Thank everybody for coming out. All the prayers. It means a lot. Um, yeah, just thank, thank him. Yeah. Thank him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, buddy. So I do, I do want to, I do want the, the captain just to say a little bit, you know, how, how we came about finding, you know, it was once again, it was folks giving us tips and leads and the rescue teams and everybody that was out there jumping right on it and following every lead. And I tell you, we had a lot of them come in and uh, we hit every one of them immediately and diligently and, and it paid off. And I, and I could not be happier by the way this turned out. I know we're all ready for some rest, but I want this gentleman right here to say, say a few words. We, uh, like the sheriff said, we, we responded on a tip and uh, located by voice uh, this young man and went to him, uh, disentangled him from some briars that he was hung up in, uh, brought him out, here we go. So thank everybody that, that did assist. Thanks for all the community support and everybody that helped us. So uh, real quick, we'll, we'll take a few questions. Of course, we'll be available the rest of the week, but anything, Brian, what you got, buddy? Uh, any indication he'd been out there the whole time? 
you'd search that area, it seems like, it's been around, had, had the hate been there the whole time, or was this something that, another thing that we have a, a question to answer here? Yeah, this, well, I don't believe he was there the whole time. I believe he did some moving around. That was an area that we were getting to, you know, we initially went into the search where he was last seen, and that's where we started and started working it out methodically. So uh, this was definitely an area. We got a call, a tip. Uh, our deputies and the captain went straight to the location. Uh, as soon as the captain stepped out, he, he heard Casey asking for his mother. Uh, and he was about 40, what, 40? 40, 40, 50 yards. Yeah, 40 or 50 yards into the woods. I had to go through a lot of water to get to him. And, and then Casey was in there uh, in some vines and thorn, thorn bushes. So. Did he indicate how he got in there himself? No, sir. He, he hasn't said a whole lot except when his, when his little, little sister came in there, he really brightened up then. So what was the condition he was found? I'm sorry, ma'am. What ma was the condition? Um, I, I believe he was, uh, you want to speak to his condition? He, he was cold, but he was, he was verbal in command to us. So the more we warmed him up, the more active he became. And, you know, I, I think for the conditions, I think, I think he fared very well. You know, we're very fortunate for where we are. We got a lot of rain yesterday. Was he wet? He was. Uh, I think every, everything in there is wet right now. Everything's wet. So. And I'll tell you, like I've, I've said in the, the previous, you know, this terrain was just, it, it presented so many tough challenges for us, you know, and a lot of it had to do by foot. Uh, we did have a lot of aircraft come in, you know, and I, I do want to acknowledge, you know, the FBI. These folks have been awesome. They came in here and they just brought so many resources to help us here in Craven County find Casey, as well as the SBI, the State Highway Patrol, you know, about an, another uh, 20 to 25 sheriff's offices, local police departments, our volunteer rescues, and of course the citizens of Craven that came in just by the hundreds to cover this huge track of property uh, that we were working on. How far away from where he was reported missing did you find him? Uh, what was it, maybe less than a quarter of a mile, maybe? A quarter and a half, quarter and half, half yeah. Yeah, a little over a quarter of a mile. Something like that. You guys obviously still had some questions. Can you tell us what, what is the process going forward in terms of any further investigation? Uh, well, as we treat, we're treating it from the beginning as a missing child, you know, the child has been found. Casey's been found and brought home. So, um, like I said, the family was very co cooperative. That was key, as were all the neighbors. So, Jamie, you have anything? No. Good to go. Any indication there was any kind of abduction or that he was taken and then returned, or do we think this was... No, a absolutely not. At, at no time did we see any indications of an abduction. And, you know, just to take that a little further, that's why an Amber Alert was not put out. There were no signs of abduction. Believe me, uh, had there been the slightest, we would have done that. Was he still in the same clothing as what was reported for people to look at? And any cuts or bruises? You said you found cuts or bruises. He, he was in. It's still in his coat. Uh, it, it was zipped up, uh, and he is. He's he's cut up a little bit, scraped stuff like that. But in very good spirits, very happy. Uh, and like I said, you know, what was really special was when he saw his little sister and smiled. So it was a very touching moment. Very touching. Does Plan for him to be here overnight? Or I, that I don't know. Uh, I know he's receiving medical treatment, uh, but he was talking. So. Three-year-old boy lost in NC Woods tells his family he hung out with a bear for two days. The three-year-old boy who spent two days lost in the woods of eastern North Carolina tells his family he hung out with a bear for companionship while hundreds of people searched frantically in cold and rainy weather to find him. The Craven County Sheriff's Office said Monday that it does not intend to dispute little Casey Hathaway's story. Casey's aunt, Brianna Hathaway, shared the bear anecdote on Facebook Friday morning, adding that he is healthy, smiling, and talking after being found late Thursday night. He said he hung out with a bear for two days, she posted. God sent him a friend to keep him safe. God is a good God. Miracles do happen. Casey spent Thursday night being examined by doctors at Carolina East Medical Center, and hospital staff said Friday that he was in good condition, according to TV station WBTW. His mother, Brittany Hathaway, remained by his side at the hospital. He was released from the hospital Saturday, reported Witten. Craven County Sheriff Chip Hughes addressed the boy's bear story Monday during an interview with TV station WCTI. I don't know if that meant he saw a bear. I don't know if that meant a bear embraced him or what it meant, Hughes told the station. I thought it was a very cute story and if that's what helped a child survive through this, you know what, I'm going to embrace that story that came from a three-year-old, 
to his mom. Casey was found late Thursday, stuck in a tangle of vines and thorns, about a half a mile from where he went missing, Hughes said in a press conference streamed by WRAL. Authorities say they were aided by a 911 call from someone who reported hearing Casey crying for his mother deep in the woods, reported TV station WSOC. A team rushed to the area and followed the sound of the boy's voice, Chuckawinity EMS Captain Shane Greer told WCTI. The 911 caller, according to WRAL, was a woman who was walking her dogs when she heard the boy crying out. The New Bern Sun Journal says the 25-pound boy was wet, cold, and scratched up. But speaking when found by rescuers who waded through waist-deep water. Casey had been missing since Tuesday, when he wandered from his grandmother's yard while playing with other children, said the Craven County Sheriff's Office in a Facebook post. Hundreds of volunteers joined law enforcement agencies to search treacherous terrain that is flooded and dotted with sinkholes, the Sheriff's Office said on Facebook. Even the train searchers are having trouble navigating safely, said the post. TV station WSOC reported Friday that authorities don't know how far the boy strayed during the two days, but believe he was moving around most of the time he was lost. 